Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Today I'm out at the shop and uh, I'm gonna put my four door on the dyno and just play around with it a little bit. I actually put this car on pump gas for a potential buyer. He actually came up here, told me he had cash in hand, uh, but he couldn't get E85 where he was, um, or he didn't wanna run it on E85. So I actually put the car on pump gas for this buyer uh, that was coming up today to buy it. And uh, he showed up and ended up not buying the car. So I kind of wasted my afternoon putting this thing on pump gas. But I figured try to make something good of it and make a video for you guys. And I'm going to put it on the dyno with pump gas in it. And then I'm going to put E85 in it and uh, see what kind of difference it makes on this little D15. It's a stock D15 B7 uh, with a turbo. So it has like a GT28. Um, genuine Garrett turbo with a log cast iron manifold and a, uh, a tile wastegate. It's got a pretty decent intercooler on it. And uh, yeah, it's just a little single cam. Uh, not expecting big power out of this thing, but maybe we can learn something and see how this thing responds with ethanol in it. So like I said earlier, I drained all the ethanol out of it, which I wish I wouldn't have, but I did. So, can't really do nothing about it now. But here it is in all its glory. Uh, this car runs great. I just don't really drive it because I recently purchased a 2016 Dodge Ram uh, 1500 Eco Diesel, which I might make a video on soon if you guys are interested on that truck. Um, I really like it, uh, despite what all the haters say about the Eco Diesel. I'm pretty, pretty happy with it. So, maybe I'll make a video on that soon if you guys are interested. But, uh, yeah, the only thing I did to this car since I got it is I tuned it on ethanol, the clutch started slipping. So I recently just replaced it with a Clutch Max Stage 2 uh, clutch from eBay. It's the white pressure plate. Um, I just replaced the clutch on it the other day, put a tie rod in it, and put some front brake pads on it. And I fixed a bunch of exhaust leaks, and the exhaust broke on it, so I fixed that stuff. We did the decapped injectors in it, so it has Hunter 2 normal style truck injectors in it. Uh, if you guys watched the install video, I did that with this car. Um, other than that, I've just driven it a little bit here and there. And uh, yeah, just tidied up a bunch of loose ends. We put the max peating rods, coils over, coil overs in this thing as well. These, this car has the, uh, like the entry level max peating rod coil overs in it. Um, and yeah, so other than that, it's yeah, just a little four door. Super clean car though. Uh, that's kind of the reason I bought it. It has a uh, rear, rear tie bar and lower control arms and stuff like that for suspension. And uh, up here in Wisconsin, it's kind of rare to see one of these cars this clean. The body um, really doesn't have any dents or anything like that. And it doesn't have any rust. Like the rear quarters are super clean. Um, it's got a carbon fiber uh, rear trunk from VIS. It's got, uh, yeah, like I said, it's a little dirty right now, but uh, the body's super straight. Uh, the only thing is, is like the hood needs to get repainted and these front fenders are mismatched and need to be paint matched. But if I did keep this car, maybe I could paint it or something, but I don't know if I wanna. I'd rather uh, maybe sell this car and uh, put the money into the EF and the Integra. I wanna do some more stuff to the Integra and I wanna do some suspension mods and get the EF ready for the street or the track or whatever. So without further ado, let's put this little single cam on the dyno and get a baseline. Um, like I said, I just got done retuning it completely on pump gas. So I'll probably just do a baseline on pump gas, maybe play around with it a little bit and then switch it over to E and uh, see what we can do there. I also want to see if I can hyper mile this car, see if I can get some good mileage out of it because you know, the Joe Biden gas prices are really on the rise. And uh, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna be driving my diesel with 460 a gallon fuel. I'd rather spend 350 a gallon and get E85. But I don't know, maybe I'll just ride the Groms once it gets nice out, but it's still uh, a little bit below freezing today here in Wisconsin and this week's supposed to be cold yet. So um, hopefully the weather will warm soon. But enough babbling, let's get to it. This car has BKR7E spark plugs gapped down to 20 thousandths. Uh, other than that, it's just a stock D15B7 minus ARP head studs and the turbo kit. Okay, blah, 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 let's go. All right guys, all strapped down, ready to go. Got the dyno set up. 
And uh, we're gonna do our first baseline run. Uh, the car is getting tuned on Honda Tuning Suite. I'm gonna show you, show you what we're working with here for a timing map to start. Remember guys, this is on 93 octane pump gas. So there's our ignition map. We can go over to the fuel side. And we just got a pretty basic fuel map in here right now. And uh, it runs pretty good currently, so we're going to uh, see how she does. See what kind of power it makes. See what kind of boost it's on. The boost gauge, this glow shift, glow shit boost gauge looks really cool. And I like how responsive they are. Like if I hit the throttle, it's immediate. Same thing with the oil pressure, it's like a fucking tack. Wing. Yeah, okay, so I actually like low shift gauges, but uh, we're at 179 degree coolant temp right now. The boost gauge, I think, is around seven pounds, seven, eight pounds of boost. Uh, we'll see what she does for power, and uh, yeah. I put $25 in $93 octane for this guy that was going to buy it in this car. And uh, it's almost empty. <laughs> so hopefully we can uh, get this over with and put some real fuel in it. But I'm curious to see how much of a difference it really is going to make on such a low power setup. Um, usually the lower the power, the less the difference is switching from pump to, get, pump to E. But we'll see what kind of gains we can do. Looks like a mud truck with all the freaking gravel that got splattered out from the driveway on it. Let's get it. Well, it's definitely a little rich. Um, I kind of set it up that way. So we made a whopping 152 horsepower, uh, which is about 70 horsepower-ish over a stock D15. Uh, but we're going to uh, see if we can improve on this. I'm just going to make. A, I'm going to clean up the fuel map a little bit. Uh, leave the same ignition and stuff in there for now, and we'll get the uh, air fuel in the 11s and uh, see if this thing picks up any power from that. Because uh, it was uh, like 10-2 air fuel. Uh, for most of the run there. So we're gonna try to just clean it up. Uh, the graph doesn't look so bad. Try to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it a little better. So the graph doesn't look terrible, but uh, let's see if we can improve on that. You can see that this is uh, just a little wavy in here with the torque and I think that's just because it was so rich and uh, it wasn't like consistent fueling throughout there. Uh, peak torque was like 4,600 RPM or so, 4,700. Uh, and we'll try to see what we can do with that and see what happens. Like I said, I'm just gonna lean it out a little bit, probably pull 10% out of the boost map and uh, see what happens. I'm just a little nervous with this D15. Uh, I actually squirted a rod out of one of these one time and I did on a Y7 as well. I've never broken a Z6 rod or broken a uh, Y8 rod, but the stock D15, yeah. But worst case scenario, these motors are like a hundred bucks. So whatever, we'll send it. That was much better on the fuel side of things. That was more along the lines of uh, 1120 or 1130 air fuel. Um, and we picked up power pretty much everywhere. Uh, made another 10 horsepower just pull, uh, pulling out that uh, fuel change. So we went like 1030 or so air fuel to 1130. And uh, you can see the difference. Quite a bit smoother too. 
quite a lot smoother actually and it made way more power up top too so uh, we're gonna see if we can improve on that we'll try to uh, the fuel is a lot closer now so I think I'm gonna try just a degree or two on pump gas here and see what happens and we'll pour the E85 in and see what it can make then also the dyno might be reading kind of low today because the uh, I didn't have my weather station on for a while and now that I turned the weather station on it's actually uh, the correction factor today is point uh, let's see here point nine seven so this is the uh, correction today environmental correction factor um, if I turn that off and did another pull uh, that's kind of how I've been doing my numbers lately is I have the correction at one uh, just so it doesn't uh, you know pull pull uh, power or whatever just have it uh, one oh so we're gonna do one more run uh, with it at one oh and we're gonna see what difference it makes on the dyno see how much uh, more power or less power it makes just from changing the correction factor unfortunately we have to do another run I can't see what the numbers are uh, with the correction factor on or off I have to do a new run uh, for it to work so I'm just gonna try it and see what happens See what that did to our number yeah it bumped, it bumped us up to 167 uh, just changing the uh, the environmental correction stuff so that's good to know uh, this is probably more realistic of a number to go off of uh, just because it is cold here so it's been pulling power uh, but 1.0 is what it's making today in this condition without any correction it probably would have made even a little bit more power than that it probably might have even made 170 uh, but yeah try to get this uh, torque curve a little smoother I don't know how I can do that I'm going to show you what I did to this fuel change now that we have a, kind of a torque curve to go off of you can kind of see in the 2D map here that the fuel curve kind of resembles the torque curve so it's going to be lower fuel here more fuel at peak torque and then level back off uh, kind of how it's doing right now so right where uh Right where this little hump is, is where peak torque is. That being there uh, just tells us where the peak, you know, I had a lean spot where that's bumped up. So that's just saying that the car is making more power in those spots. And that's why it's going leaner there. So I had to uh, shape it a little bit differently. And I'm starting to tune with the 2D uh, graph a lot more now that I have the dyno. It's... Uh, you know actually becoming a lot more useful when I'm on the street I'm kind of just like you know eyeballing stuff and making changes that way which works and it, it's worked for me for a while but I think to uh, really perfect these things um, using that 2d is pretty cool do one more and then uh, I might try to play with some timing on pump gas see what happens all right guys I just did a back-to-back -back run uh, you can see it overlaid pretty much perfectly uh, the only thing I did is I splashed in a little bit more fuel right here to kind of level the fuel map out a little bit more. So now the fuel is like almost 1150 the whole time. Uh, so that's perfect. Um, now we're going to play with ignition that the fuel is pretty much perfect. It's right in the middle 11s. Um, I know for a fact that this car will make more power at like a 12.0 or a 12.5 air fuel. I just don't like doing that on pump gas especially. Um, Maybe on E85 we could do that, but I just, to compare apples to apples, I want to do 1150 air fuel on E and on pump gas, which I don't know if it's really going to make a difference, but it's going to be safer running a 12.5 air fuel on E85 than it is running it on pump gas. Pump gas is going to detonate a lot easier, and uh, it's just, you're going to have a bad day trying to run that lean of air fuel on pump gas. But even on this little low power setup like this, it probably would be fine. I just would rather not. I don't know. So I'm going to see if we can get rid of some of the waviness in here. 
uh, just how it's how it's a little bit just kind of down up down up you know it's not it's not super flat so I'm gonna see if I can maybe uh, modify the timing table a little bit and see if I can make that uh, go away so I'm gonna bring you guys along and uh, show you what I'm doing so generally as a rule of thumb I'm not gonna run any less than I don't know 16 degrees or so uh, so we probably won't run a run that much up here. Uh, we could probably put our low value at, I'd say probably 10 degrees, above like five pounds of boost. We'll do four pounds of boost. You see how this is all 16 right here? That's my idle uh, timing. And I run the idle timing all the way across to use it to interpolate by column here. And uh, I'll show you how I do that. Uh, so 16 is pretty much our base, so what we're going to run at idle and anything below 1,000 RPM. Uh, and then when we're in boost, say like 4 pounds of boost, I'm going to bring that down to like uh, 14 here, and then probably like 12, and then 10 up here. So we're going to put these values at 10. Hopefully you guys can see the screen okay. Uh, here we'll probably go 12. Here we'll go 14. And then the rest of this can be, we'll pull go 15 here and then the rest of it's gonna be 16 across. So now we'll go down to, uh, you know, above peak torque so above peak torque is above like 5,000 rpm on this setup and above that we can run maximum timing uh what i would feel comfortable with pushing on this setup so typically a rule of thumb on hondas is like uh on pump gas especially 10 pounds of boost like 20 degrees of timing above peak torque uh, it's kind of a good start so uh these far right columns where it's nine nine pound and 11 pound columns i'm gonna put 20 degrees above 5,000 rpm so I'm just going to do that real quick and show you. And this is pretty much going to add, uh, it's going to add some timing to this table. Uh, it's kind of conservative right now. So let me show you here. So here above 5,000 RPM in the 9 and 11 pound columns, I'm putting this at 20. So then we'll go from 10 right here where we made that earlier. We'll go down to 20 and we'll hit interpolate by row or row column whatever so now you can see that it built 10 all the way up to 18 there uh, because you want to run less timing below peak torque especially on a little single cam with small rods you don't want to smack it with a ton of timing down there uh, so eight pounds we're going to do 22 degrees and we'll interpolate from 12 up here Down to 22. Oh, I'll show you this table when I'm done with it. Uh, it's kind of hard to hold the camera and modify this, so when I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, guys, I spiced this thing up uh, cruising. To try to get some better mileage out of it, I'm gonna run 45 degrees or so cruising on the highway to see if I can get better mileage. Uh, um, I'm gonna let you, maybe let you guys know how that works. Because uh, typically you want to run a lot of ignition time and cruising and a really lean air fuel to get really good mileage out of these things. So, uh, but the rest of the boost map here looks pretty good. And uh, we're going we're gonna to send it with this timing map and see what she does. All right, let's get it. Touched the fuel from the last time. All I did was change ignition, so we'll see how she looks. Sorry if I moved the camera. I didn't mean to do that. I was just trying to hang on to the steering wheel and the camera at the same time. Uh, air fuel looked pretty good. Both the same as it was before. So we'll see what that ignition change did to the tune, or did to the power, if it did anything. 
Let's find out. Uh, I've actually seen a lot of these single cams. They just don't take any timing. They don't. They don't really respond to it. Um, so, yeah. So we'll just see. I'm honestly just hoping that it kind of smoothened out the uh, the power down low. It actually made seven more horsepower. Uh, it made more power pretty much everywhere above three grand. Uh, below three grand it lost, and that could have just been, you know, that could have been a fluke, kind of right where I floored it. But uh, this is comparing pretty much the last two runs, and you can see that ignition timing that we did picked up a good amount of power. Uh, broad, broad power there, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm sure we could probably just give it another two degrees and see if it takes any more. Yeah, let's try it. We'll give it two more degrees. This is 93 octane with 10% ethanol, so it's not, it's not bad pump gas. It's pretty decent. So we're at 172 horsepower right now, and uh, yeah, still 93 octane gas. And that timing change that I just did picked up power pretty much everywhere. All right, so all I did, I put two degrees in it below 5,000 RPM, and I put one degree in it above 5,000. So we'll see what that does. Uh, see if that made a difference. Uh, nope, it didn't really take any more. Uh, it did make slightly more power, three more horsepower. Uh, and you can see kind of where it took the timing. So green is the new one and yellow is the old. So you can see I put two in it down here and it literally didn't do shit. Uh, you can see up here above like 4,500 or so, it did pick up. And then up here it picked up a little bit as well. Uh, and then I kind of nosedived up top because I never spun it that high yet. And up there it's actually kind of rich. So the fuel currently above like six grand is flat. And I have to actually take that 2D table and taper it out. So it's gonna come up and then it's actually gonna pull fuel out. So just how the power curve is right here is kind of what I have to do to the the fuel curve as well. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much as good as that's gonna get on 93 octane. Uh, 170, let's see here, 175 horse on, oh shit, I, I still didn't even log boost <laughs> on the map sensor. But the gauge is showing a little over five pounds, uh, probably right around six, six pounds of boost. And uh, yeah, not too bad, not too bad. All right guys, I just got this filled up with the uh, 93 octane that was in the car. Just ran a uh, hose off the fuel pressure regulator right into the can. And uh, now we're gonna hook up the return line again and pour a couple gallons of E85 in. I wanna make sure that all that pump gas is out of there. So uh, anyways, I'm gonna get to it and we'll do another run on the dyno with E85. Probably do one run with uh, E85 and then just back it up see if the power like continues to increase the more I do runs without changing anything because the ethanol is working through the fuel system. The car still ran, uh, but nothing was coming out of the, the line off of the fuel pressure regulator and the regulator was starting to squeak like it was got it had air in it. So it's out of gas, but there's still a little bit in there because uh, the car was still running. All right, so we're gonna base off of the last pump gas run we did. Uh, this is the 93 octane, the best we got out of it. Uh, this is with that added timing on that run. I said I put two degrees in it down low and one up top. That's that run, and that's what's in the car right now for a tune. Uh, the only thing I'm gonna do is change fuel. Uh, so we're gonna go in and get the fuel as close as we can to where it was uh, in the mid 11s air fuel. And uh, we'll see what happens. So. I only put a couple gallons. I only put a couple gallons of uh, E85 in this thing, uh, but it's been running for a couple minutes now, 
and you can see the air fuel is way leaner. Uh, that's almost 18 oh air fuel, so. All right, so like I said, we're gonna leave the timing map the same. It's fun because this car is the only one I have that I dyno that actually has a heater. Ah, uh, the Integra does, so it's not as bad tuning in the cold. Uh, so, like I said, timing map's gonna stay the same. Fuel map's gonna stay the same. All we're gonna do is go to our uh, injector calibration here, and we're gonna lower the injector size to like a 650. Just gonna lower the uh, injector size a little bit. Because in turn, that's going to make our air fuel run richer if we go with a smaller injector size so this looks about where we were uh, going from a 750 to a 650 <coughs> I don't know the exact content of these this e85 uh, but we're gonna drive it a little bit and see kind of how far off we are gonna be a little lean but it's pretty close I didn't have the cruising map perfect before so yeah I'm floored and it's like 13.8 so we definitely have to add some fuel yet and I've also noticed too like uh, I went down to a 600 cc injector and you can see it riching up even more uh, I have noticed with like E85 and even the M1 and stuff like that, they just require more fuel. They require even more fuel when the car's under a load, like wide open, than they do at idle. You can't base like idle air fuel off of your percentage of how much E85 you're really using. Uh, so I might still have to add fuel wide open, uh, even though I'm doing an overall change. It may, st it may just want more fuel wide open and not uh, cruising and stuff like that. So I just did another overall change, like I said, so. And it's definitely richer cruising. Let's see how it is wide open. It's close. Uh, I'm probably gonna put another like five or 10% in it. Uh, we went like 12.5 there, which I probably, I probably would have stayed in that had I'm not trying to do this test. Uh, but since we're doing this test, uh, we want to have the air fuel pretty much as close as possible. So I'm going to give it another like probably five, 10% uh, in boost. And then we're going to do a power run finally. So we'll go to the table. We'll just add it in boost. go let's uh see what she does put you guys outside because it's hard to, it's really hard to film uh with the camera and like i'm trying to drive the car i need a gopro for doing that shit that did I don't know what that did for power but overall just it sounded better uh, it just sounded happier so that's our first run on e85 that was slightly leaner than what it was on pump gas the pump gas file was like 11.3 or 11.4 that was more like 11.6 air fuel so uh, we picked up big power with not changing timing or anything. Holy shit. It actually light. Look at that difference, guys. Holy shit. That's, ju that's just from putting the fuel in. That's doing nothing else. Wow. That is crazy cool. Uh, you can see how much smoother it is, too. Like, why wouldn't you put E85 in everything? Why? Why wouldn't you? 
Uh, so that made 183 horsepower. We made a peak of eight more horsepower, but in the mid range, uh, we made 167 foot pounds of torque at like 4,200, 167, and on E85 we made 183, so that's almost 20 foot pounds of torque, changing nothing but the fuel. <laughs> um, that's like a little shot of nitrous. It's crazy. Uh, so we'll try to optimize this a little bit more, and uh, I don't know, maybe try to run it a little leaner, like a 12.2. I think on this low boost, I don't think it's gonna hurt it, uh, especially on E85. Uh, so I might just pull that 5% that I put in to try to compare these two fuels, pull that back out uh, so it's a little leaner, like 12.2, and then we might give it another degree or two degrees and see if it responds again. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna pull all 5%. That 5% I did put in, I'm gonna pull it back out, see if we can make a little bit more. Let's see what that did. That was like a 12.5 air fuel. Uh, 12, it bobbed between 12.0 and 12.5. I'd like to uh, either get a dyno wideband set up better so I can like have a, a air fuel on the dyno a little easier. It's just tough to do that um, and have, a, have it on the sniffer and the end of the exhaust. It just doesn't give you a good reading in my opinion. If I had a sensor going right to the dyno, that would work good, but it's, uh, it's kind of a hassle sometimes if it's easier just having it in the car. Um, what I could do is I could run the wideband uh, gauge into the ECU and then we can actually log air fuel perfectly and then adjust accordingly in every little spot uh, to get this thing even smoother. But uh, for the most part, uh, we're just, you know, we're still getting some data here. Okay, so that makes, uh, that's a learning thing for us. I went to a 12.5 air fuel, tried to lean it out, and uh, it did not make any more power. It made one more horsepower, but I mean, pretty much everywhere on the curve, it, uh, it just overlaid on this second run here. This is the one on pump gas, but these two, you can see the two here, two here, two here. So, uh, E85 likes some fuel. I wonder if we put fuel in it, if it would uh, make a difference. But uh, yeah, I don't know. 184 horse on six pounds, not too bad. Uh, I wonder if we splashed fuel back in, maybe instead of pulling that five, put 10 in, uh, so it runs a little richer, like an 11.0 or 11.2. See if it picks up any. Sometimes cars like to run richer, sometimes they like to run leaner, that's why you always kind of play around on the dyno to figure out what they like. Um, we could try that and then put another degree or two in it, but I mean, this is a good comparison for now. This video is probably really long. Uh, if you guys wanna see more of the four door and more of this tuning, uh, let me know what you wanna see with the four door and maybe I'll keep it and screw screw these freaking guys that waste my time uh, that was supposed to buy this car. Uh, but I actually had some fun tonight playing around with this thing. Uh, not, the, not the biggest power in the world, but uh, nonetheless we did make some improvements and we saw what the fuel did alone not even changing timing or anything just the fuel change pretty pretty cool uh so we could do that we could maybe turn the boost up a little bit and uh do something else in the next video if you guys want to see some more uh be sure to subscribe like and comment down below what you want me to do uh and we'll go from there so have a great night and a better tomorrow guys me and the little sedan here this eg sedan are out of here have a great night better tomorrow see ya